Hey everybody, welcome to the last lecture in chapter three. So we're going to be looking at um, cell organelles and eukaryotic cells. Um, in general, eukaryotic cells are much more complex and they are larger than your prokaryotic cells. They all have, well, in general, all eukaryotic cells have a nucleus and that nucleus has a nuclear membrane that surrounds it that has small little structures called nuclear pores that allows materials to move in and out of the nucleus um, it within the nucleus the dna is held dna is the genetic material that d dictates um, all the structures of the cell dictates everything for the cell. So it's basically the brain, right? The nucleolus is found within the nucleus and it is the site for ribosome synthesis. Ribosomes are the structures that we use for protein synthesis. So we produce our ribosomes, then we send the ribosomes out through those tiny little um, nuclear pores and those ribosomes are going to be either found within the cytoplasm or they're going to embed on the um, one of the endomembrane structures known as the endoplasmic reticulum. All right, so I'm going to go through this relatively fast only because most of you have probably um, identified or learned about these different um, organelles in a general biology class. In fact, I am confident that everybody has heard of these organelles um, if you were in a public school at any given time because you learn about these organelles when you are very young in like grade school, you learn about them again in middle school. And if you take a biology class in high school, you learn about them a third time. And so then when you go to college, oftentimes people take general biology, they learn about them. Or if you took anatomy and physiology, you learn about them. So hopefully this is a um, repeat in something you've already learned. If not, I do have a video that I can post for you that will help you to um, identify or learn these organelles again. So I talked about the endomembrane system. Part of it is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is what I talked about in the last slide. Um, it's the endomembrane system is a system of organelles that are membrane bound um, and they kind of flow together and allow for transport of materials as well as producing certain materials. So there is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum within this endomembrane um, system. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum plays a role in fat or lipid biosynthesis. So um, it produces in human cells, it produces your, your tes testosterone or estrogens. Um, it functions in carbohydrate metabolism. So breaking down certain carbs and detoxification of certain compounds. Then you have rough endoplasmic reticulum, which contains um, ribosomes. So it's studded with ribosomes, which is where it gets its rough name. Um, the ribosomes then synthesize proteins within the endoplasmic reticulum. So rough ER functions in helping in, in, in protein synthesis as well as in modification of those proteins. Then we have the Golgi apparatus, which processes the proteins and lipids, um, adding sugar molecules or producing, uh, which would then produce glycoproteins or glycolipids. Um, these are going to be used in, um, oftentimes embedded in the plasma membrane for cell to cell communication or performing that um, for producing a um, glycolipid 
that can function in making like a sugary coat around a eukaryotic cell. So here is the nucleus again. This is the nucleolus. Directly off the nucleus is the endoplasmic reticulum. And so this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, all these little red bulbs. Those are the ribosomes where proteins are synthesized and then they can be uh, modified within the endoplasmic reticulum. Here is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is um, going to function in producing fat molecules or lipid molecules like estrogen, testosterone, other um, lipid-based molecules. It also helps in detoxification. So alcohols um, are going to be detoxified in this area, which is important. So in humans, again, I do, I teach anatomy and physiology. So I do talk a lot about humans when I talk about eukaryotes. Um, we have a lot of smooth ER in our liver. And then here's the Golgi. So materials that are produced here or here can move to the Golgi be packaged, modified a little further, and then um, sent out to the different areas of the cell or be released from the cell. And so the Golgi is kind of like the post office of the um, cell for a eukaryote, where you package everything up and then you ship it out, or the shipping center, that might be another one that you could call it. We have cytoskeleton. Cytoskeleton is composed of three different proteins. We have microfilaments, we have intermediate filaments, and we have microtubules. So microfilaments are the very tiny filaments. So you can see here, microfilaments. Um, my, um, intermediate filaments here, so microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and then the microtubules, okay? The, the um, cytoskeleton is the structure that allows for movement of materials within the cell, and it helps to maintain the structure of the cell. So some eukaryotic cells have a cell wall that helps to maintain the structure, but not all have the cell wall. All eukaryotic cells have a cytoskeleton that also helps in maintaining the cell shape and in movement of materials. Um, associated with the cytoskeleton, the microtubules that are part of the cytoskeleton make centrosomes. So centrosomes are microtubules that are organized in a certain pattern. And these microtubules actually, or these centrosomes, form a mitotic spindle fibers. Mitotic spindle fibers function in movement of DNA. So again, I told you that the, the um, cytoskeleton functions in movement of materials. Here's an example of movement of materials. When DNA is, when, when a cell is getting ready to undergo mitosis, the cytoskeleton, or not the centrosomes, which are formed from part of the cytoskeleton, um, form spindle fibers, and the spindle fibers then move the DNA to areas of the cell where they are needed. Then we have lysosomes. Lysosomes are like the digestive system of the cell. So they contain digestive enzymes that break down materials into smaller subunits that can either be ingested by the cell or can be released by the cell. Can be used as nutrients for the cell or can be released depending. Um, we have mitochondria. Most people know <coughs> mitochondria. Apologies, that was my dog who, for whatever reason, barked. Um, mitochondria, most people know the mitochondria as the site of, or the energy site of the cell. Um, powerhouse is what we usually say. Um, it is the site of cell respiration where we're going to produce ATP. 
um, mitochondria and chloroplasts are both part of that um, endos, uh, endosymbiotic theory. And they're the two organelles that we talk about that have their own 70S ribosomes, their own um, DNA, and they have enzymes. They can um, replicate on their own outside of normal replication of the cell. And if you take them out of the cell, the cell cannot produce new mitochondria or chlor chloroplasts, which are a lot of evidence that show that mitochondria and chloroplasts came from ancestral bacteria. Um, the chloroplast then is the site of photosynthesis. Um, chloroplasts contain chlorophyll, which is the pigment molecule. This is the pigment trapping or the energy trapping molecule um, that traps in sunlight energy. And we use sunlight energy as well as carbon dioxide and water to produce carbohydrates. The cell wall. So eukaryotic cells, um, many eukaryotic cells have a cell wall. Not all eukaryotic cells have a cell wall, though. So fungi, plants, algae all have cell walls. In general, protists and um, animals do not have cell walls. The cell walls are going to be composed of different structures depending on the type of organism. So fungi contain chitin in their cell wall. Algae contain cellulose in their cell wall. Plants contain cellulose in their cell wall. Um, some types of um, algae contain silica as part of their cell wall. So different eukaryotic cells walls are composed of different structures. And actually we can use that to target um, any eukaryotic pathogens. Um, and then cells, um, eukaryotic cells also have extracellular appendages like flagella and cilia. Flagella function in locomotion. The movement for a flagella typically are going to be in a straight line though. Um, flagella always function in movement. Cilia are shorter and they can be used for locomotion, but a lot of times they're also used in feeding or movement of materials along the surface. So here's a ciliated protozoan that will use the cilia to push nutrients towards the um, mouth part of the cell. That is the end of this chapter. I know it was a long chapter, but excellent um, information very entertaining, I think, chapter. So um, I will post this video and um, get ready for chapter four. All right. Bye.